there are two types of charges. Charge at rest, we call it static electricity, and charge in motion, we call it electric current. Charge at rest can create only electric field around it, which is defined by Coulomb's law. And charge in motion, right, create electric field and magnetic field around it, which is defined by MPS law. Now, if the charge accelerate, then you have to use Lorentz force law to describe the electric field and magnetic field around the wire, right, to describe the force. Today, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to just try to understand the force on Q3, right, this is a static charge due to Q1, which is positive, and Q2, which is also positive. So let's not just say it, let's do it. I want you to consider two charges, positive, positive, 5 coulomb, or maybe micro coulomb, 7 micro coulomb. Micro coulomb converted to SI unit, okay, 0 meter, 1 meter. I want you to consider Q3, so let's change the color, Q3, which is negative. Uh, let's use a dot to represent Q3. And let's put Q3 at three location. Location 1, uh, location 2, location 3. All right, and let's just not do it. Let's name it location one, location two, location three. At what location, right, Q3 will experience net force. But before that, let's, let's find forces at its location. Force, when you talk about force, do not forget that K, Q, Q over R square, which is 1 over R square. And there's a square law. So distance is very important over here okay if distance is big then of course forces is small distance between two charges okay now let's read we're gonna call this one this is by the way um if you don't remember this is negative this is positive this is negative this is positive this is negative okay so now let's go ahead and draw the force vector so this is f force on 3 because this is q3 due to q1 okay now what about this one uh, let's before we do that let's do the the f32 force on q3 due to q2 this is smaller because this is uh, this is farther away okay uh, now let's do this one force on q3 due to q1 right and force on q3 due to q2 force on q3 due to q1 force on q3 due to q2 understand that this is q3 this is Q3 and this is Q3. I'll just I'll put it on side. This is Q3, which is negative. Okay, now the second thing I want you to uh, place a dot at a location where net force is zero. Okay, I'm going to put loss of dot at where the net force is zero. Okay, where the net force is zero. Okay, at one location, this is the best approximation where net force is zero. Now, the next thing I want you to pause the video, okay, and write and translate and convert this dot, convert this geometric, uh, convert this geometry to uh, to algebra. How can you convert this geometry to algebra? Well, very simple. You want to say f is equal to f net is equal to zero. Why is that? Because at this location, the net force is zero. Why is that? Because 
f31 is equal to f32. This is not quite equal. f31 is bigger. However, right here f31 is going to be equal to f32. Okay, there is exactly one point on this x axis where f31 is equal to f32. Good. What does that mean? That means uh, we're going to write Coulomb's law using this subscript k uh, q3 q1 over r square. And by the way, uh, I want you to find the uh, if this you put over uh, this is x and at x f that is zero. Good. So you're going to replace this one by x. Well, maybe um, you're going to replace it little later. x k uh, q3 q2 over uh, r square. The k k cancel q3 q3 cancel. You left with q1 over r square is equal to q2 over r square. Don't cancel r square r square is because they are not the same thing. Why? So q1 x squared is equal to q2 1 minus x squared. Okay, now you can do quadratic, uh, but you also can do, okay, I'm going to do show two way. One is quadratic and one is not quadratic. So q1 is 5 over x squared is equal to 7 over 1 minus x squared, right? Okay, what is not quadratic is this way. So you have a square root of 5 over x, you have a square root of 7 over 1 minus x. Okay, so you have uh, x root 7 is equal to root 5, right, minus x root 5. Okay, so what do you have? You have x root 7 plus x root 5 is equal to root 5. If you uh, factor out x, root 7 plus root 5 is equal to root 5. So x is equal to root 5 over root 7 plus root 5 and that's 0 0.45 or 46 I believe. Okay, that's one way. The other way is quadratic way. Which way is better? Yeah, you decide. Uh, so we're going to write 5. This is 5. 5 over x squared is equal to 7 over 1 minus x squared. So you have 5 times you have x squared. 1 minus 2x plus x squared. Um, Mm, is equal to 7x squared. Is that right? So 1 minus 2x plus x squared. So x squared minus 2x plus just for you to see it. So you have 7x squared is equal to 5x squared minus 10x plus 5. So you have 2x squared, right? Um, plus 10x minus 5. Okay? So x is 0 0.46. What does that mean? This axis, this is 0 0.46. So this is 0 0.54. Okay, and this is the equilibrium. Why? Because f31 is equal to f32. Because their distance is the same, but their force uh, is the same. Okay, good. All right, now let's solve another problem, see uh, how fast you can solve that one. Uh, okay, same problem. I'm going to change the digit. I'm going to call this is Q2. I'm going to call this is 15 microcoulomb, and I'm going to call this one T1. And I'm going to call this one 6 microcoulomb. And I'm going to call this one 0 meter. I'm going to call this one 2 meter. And I'm going to call this one, um, right, Q3. And I'm going to say this is x, okay. Right here, f net is 0, okay. So find x, okay. That's all I'm asking you to find x. So f net is 0, you can convert that to what? f31 is equal to f32. Why is that? Because right here, right here, this is your f31 
because this is negative. This is your F31 force on Q3 due to Q1. And this is your F32 force on Q3 due to Q2. All right, so now I'm going to follow the subscript. If you do follow the subscript, what do you get? You get K, Q3, Q1 over uh, x squared is equal to k q3 q2 over 2 minus x squared not as i change the value k k cancel q3 q3 cancel so q1 is of course uh 6 times 10 raised to negative 6 x squared is equal to uh, 15 times 10 raised to negative 6 2 minus x squared 10 raised to negative 6, 10 raised to negative 6 cancel. So what are we left with? Okay, we left with 6 over x squared is equal to 15 over 2 minus x squared. All right, now we can root both sides and see what happened. So root 6 over x squared x is equal to root 15 over 2 minus x. So x root 15 is equal to 2 root 6 minus x root 6. So x root 15 plus x root 6 is equal to 2 root 6. So x is equal to 2 root 6 root 15 plus root 6. So x is equal to 0 0.77. Uh, okay. Other way, you have 6 over x squared is equal to 15 over 2 minus x squared. All right, so you have 15 x squared is equal to 6, you have 4 minus 4x four plus x squared. So you have 15 x squared is equal to You have 9x squared plus 24x minus 24. You can divide everything by 3. 3x squared. 8x minus 8 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0 0.78. Okay, so what does that mean? From here to here, this axis is 0 0.78, and this this axis is 1.22. Okay, so that's the answer.